Hi again, this is Miss Litton, and we're still on chapter 26, Flowering Plants, Control of Growth Responses, and now um, we're going to talk about some tropisms as a response. Now, um, youngest bio buddy, could you please, oh no, 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 light-shirted bio buddy, could you please talk about the differences between phototropism and gravitropism? Go light-shirted bio buddy. <laughs> Yeah. All right, now, a tropism is any kind of plant growth towards or away from a unidirectional stimulus. Now, I think that's supposed to be a tree, but to me, it looks like broccoli. Like, definitely broccoli. Like, not a little bit, but broccoli. <clears throat> so, can you tell me, please, how is Mr. Broccoli tree growing towards the sun? What could you tell me about that that you've already learned? Oxen is going to the shady side and causing the cells on the shady side to elongate. How is it doing that? By using a pro proton pump to pump hydrogen ions out into the cell wall, which lowers the and weakens the wall so that trigger pressure can expand the cell wall right perfect okay now movement to a stimulus can be internal movement to a stimulus can be internal like trigger pressure or an electrical impulse or hormones those are all internal responses or it, I'm sorry internal stimulus or it can be an external stimulus like responses to light and water so you could have an internal response or you could have an dang it you could have an internal stimulus or you could have a external stimulus. Okay, tropism is growth responses towards or away from a unidirectional external stimuli. And turgor movements are responses to internal stimuli. Internal stimuli. Now look what your next two boxes are. One, your next box is all about what? external stimuli and then your next box is by internal stimuli okay so we're gonna stop with the start with the external and then we already talked about this a little bit already we talked about phototropism this is time lack of photography watching this daisy move and follow the light now we know it's oxen right but here's the question I would ask you oxen is on the shady side but how does it know it's the shady side what if it's not hot? What if it's a cold winter day? How do you know where the light is? You use your eyes. So what are the plant's eyes to know where the shady side and the sunny side are? And that's right here, you have a light sensitive pigment. You have rods and cones in your eyeball and something called retinol, okay? This right here, this is called a phototropin, and it helps plants to maximize exposure to light and prevent overexposure. So that's the pigment that's detecting that light, and we're gonna learn a little bit later in this presentation how it changes shape, et cetera. So for right now, um, um, we're on movement caused by external stimuli. You have positive, negative. Phototropism is positive in shoots. And the receptor is phototropin. And this part we've already learned, right? Good on this? It's just a little review slide. Now, there's another kind of movement, um, another kind of tropism, thigmotropism. And thigmotropism is unequal growth due to contact with the solid object. Now, I want you to think this out with your bio buddy and we will have the dark shirted bio buddy go. You know how oxen <coughs> works. Oxen work by moving to the shady side, staying on the shady side and causing those cells on the shady side to elongate. In thigmotropism, it's about contact. So do the cells elongate where it's made the contact or where it doesn't have the contact? Discuss that with your bio buddy. Would the ones who have the contact or not have the contact along? 
Okay, so I'm a vine, I'm going to grow on another plant. If I'm not bothering the other plant, what would that be called? Commensalism. If I'm going to steal from that plant, what would that be called? Parasite. Okay, so I'm a plant, I've come in contact with where I want to grow up. Is where my contact, does it grow? Or the ones opposite of that grow? Opposite. opposite. Because if those elongate, it'll cause it to curve. These hold still, and the other ones then cause it to curve around it. Okay? All right. So, thigmotropism is a response to contact with another object. Um, cells on the opposite side elongate. If touched in the dark, it will respond <laughs> with... <laughs> Maybe I could phrase that differently. If touched in the dark, <clears throat> it will respond when there is light. Because you need what? <laughs> Don't put, I can just imagine your pictures in your group share notes. Stop it. <laughs> if touched in the dark, it will respond when there is light. Because you need ATP. Please don't let this be to the first lecture that somebody listens to. Okay, um, and now let's take it a step further. This is just the one area that came in contact with an object, and that one area is growing. If you take this out larger, thigma morphogenesis is here. Thigma morphogenesis is um, the response. Um, in, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Where am I at? Thigma morphogenesis, when the whole plant changes its shape. When the whole plant changes its shape like a short, thick trunk of a tree in a windy location. <coughs> okay, would this right here be thigma morphogenesis or would it be a thigmotropism? What do you think? If it's localized in one area, it's going to be a what? Thigmotropism. Okay? Thigmomorphogenesis is when you have a whole plant, the whole entire plant is short or sturdier and windy. Maybe it's more elongated in an area where it's not having to constantly defend itself against wind. Okay, do you see the difference? Okay. Um, next, gravitropism. Hey, you already know this, so very briefly, it's negative in shoots, positive in roots. Now, oxen works differently in roots than it does in um, shoots. Where you concentrated the oxen in a shoot, those are the cells that what? Elongated. But in gravitropism, it's not like that. Gra in um, gravitropism in roots, when the oxen will fall to the, um, th due to gravity, to the deepest part of that root, it causes the ones on the opposite side to elongate. So the lack of oxen, those cells are gonna, those roots are gonna be the ones, that, that edge of it is gonna grow more. And um, I'll come back to that in just a minute. There's something called amuloplast that sink due to gravity, and that has a role in it as well. Um, and that will focus then on downward growth. But here is something that happens. This is the end of a root, and person in the blue seat, explain what happened. Okay, now, remember what I told you about yeah. apical dominance, right? We know oxen grow, comes from the growing tip, right? Same thing here in the roots. If you remember, if you cut off the very base of the root, then again, you're not going to have that interaction and that correct response. So that's a key area where it's made and can have an impact. All right, and next, um, let's talk about that. Uh, we already did gravitropism. In gravitropism in stems, would it be positive or negative? Gravitropism in stems would be negative because they grow against gravity up. Okay? Now, we looked at those examples would be an exception to the rule. 
Remember the roots that we talked about where in the like the mangrove trees, they turn around and come back up? Now why would they need to come back up? To get some oxygen. So they must have some sort of mutation, right? That allow them when they have less and less oxygen, because they don't do it all the way, because they still have to anchor the plant. If they didn't grow down at all, they wouldn't be anchored and all those mangrove trees would fall over. So they must have roots that grow down, but when the oxygen levels get too low, it must trigger some sort of signal transduction pathway to make those roots start growing up so that they can get some oxygen. Okay, so you're always gonna probably find some exceptions to the rule. All right, and now here, um, movement caused by internal stimuli, introduction, nastic movements, is when a cell swells due to turgor pressure. Now, why could you have those turgor responses? It could be um, touching, shaking, <coughs> thermal stimulation. So it's adaptive to this plant that if a bug lands on it and maybe wants to eat it, it automatically closes itself up. Like, you just literally, you could do it. You could touch it and they will automatically close. Um, and they can prevent that insect from chewing on it. I think this is called a prayer plant and it, goes to sleep so what happens is at night all of its leaves kind of close up like this protective response and then in the daytime when it actually could use the leaves for photosynthesis it opens back up okay and that is it for plant growth and movement responses let's talk now a little bit remember take a look here not it not it um, do a little rundown here because now you should know all of Oxen's jobs. Go. Okay, that's all the time I'm giving you. Now come back to me. Here's the big deal. Now we've talked about this. We know about oxen and the role it plays. Go to the shady side. Okay. And we said we know what its eyes are, right? It means pigment. But here's the deal that you want to get in your head. Plants know what time of day it is. They have a yeah, they have a clock. Not only do they know what time of day it is, they know what time it is in the year. Right? Because it's seasons. Certain times they're going to what? Flower. Okay? So how is it that they know that? How do they tell time? Okay? We talked about, yeah, they have a pigment, pigment, but how do they tell time? And this is how it works. Okay? This is when I told you it acts like a toggle switch. Okay? What happens is you have um, a phototropin, and it's called PR, it can absorb red light. Throughout the day, as the sun rises, you have different wavelengths of light, right? The brighter it gets. And it absorbs during the daytime more and more of that red, and it toggles into this other shape, PFR red, PFR shape, okay? Now, far red light is something you get as the evening comes on, as you start to go into dusk. And so that, now it can absor absorb the far red light and then through the night when there is absolutely no light, no red light at all, right? It's gonna slowly change back to this original shape. So you can have a ratio of PR to PFR to know what time it is, okay? And so then you can have your biological response of whether you're opening up your leaves or closing your leaves, okay? So on your um, notes, introduction, plants are aware of light. They can sense the time of day to adjust their metabolic processes such as photosynthesis. And they can sense the time of year affecting seasonal responses such as flowering. Now, let's take this a step further. Flowering, some plants flower in the winter and some plants flower in the summer. <coughs> How do they know that it's winter or summer? Well, when they identified these plants, it's, it, 
when they identified these plants that would flower in the winter, they would go, in the winters, are your days short or are your days long? Short. So they would call these types of plants short day plants. And plants that flower in the summer, they would call them long, long day plants. But then through further research, they realized it wasn't the length of the day that actually triggers their flowering. It's the length, the time they spend in the night. So, are you putting it together? Yeah, so if you are a short day plant, a plant that flowers in the winter, you really need to have a long uninterrupted night and that triggers its flowering. Whereas a plant that flowers in the summer, where you have long days, you have to have a very short night to get them to flower. Okay, so take a look right here. I'm aware of the time. This particular plant is a, is a short day, which means it needs a long night. So here, it has a long night. These are its flowers right here. So it flowers. What's gonna happen here? Flower or no flower? No flower, because it needs a long night, and it hasn't reached its critical length. So you have no flower. What about here? Flower or no flower? I see nidus interruptus, because there's a flash of what? Light. So this is like you are a short night, because it wasn't continuous. Do you see that? Think about this, then. <coughs> If you need to have a long night, like you have in the winter, what if you have a bunch of plants out there that need a long night and you take your flashlight and shine it on them in the middle of the night? Are they gonna flower? No, no. would headlights affect it? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so now talk about this scenario. It's a long day plant, so it needs a short night. So talk about these three scenarios. Are you going to have flowers? Okay. So long day, you need a short night. So that you have a maximum number of hours, right? If you go over that maximum, you're not going to flower. Did they go over the maximum here? No, so are they going to flower? Yeah, so we got flowers. What about here? No, we went over. What about here? Why yes? We had a short night. Ah, you see that? All right, so then um, summer day neutral where it doesn't matter. So if you have a hot house and you're trying to grow a certain plant and get it to, you have to control if it's not a day neutral, you have to control how much night and day it has. Um, germination also impacted, um, and um, photomorphogenesis. Plants will grow up and start to make leaves if they have the light. If they don't have light, they won't green up. They'll stay white, okay? Can you think of something that's put on in salads and sandwiches sometimes that is completely white? <laughs> what? Sprouts. Brussels sprouts, oh, yeah. right? Well, not Brussels sprouts, They're but like, yes. what are those things called? Those are seeds. They're like those weird. Yeah, those weird. Um, and some more. Alfalfa sprouts. Those white things. And then, have you ever seen white asparagus? Yeah. All right, and then. This is your last slide of the presentation. Um, plants, when they detect, if they get plenty of red light, they're fine. Okay, plenty of red light, they'll grow, no problem. But here, they're starting to get shaded out. So when they have low amounts of that red light, then that's a trigger to them to do one of two things. They can might grow taller and faster so that they don't get the shade, or they can actually secrete chemicals to inhibit the growth of their neighbors so that they don't um, shade them out, okay? Another defense mechanism. All right, so on your notes, let's get these. Um, introduction, go to phytochrome,
Go down to B. It acts as a switch on and off, can detect light and initiate a signal transduction pathway. Go down to C, little i. Inactive PR absorbs red light. Little i, little i, <coughs> TFR absorbs far red light in the evening and converts it back. Number 2A, flowering and photoperiodism. Photoperiodism. Below that, a short day means a long night. A long day means a short night. Germination, little i, little i, photomorphogenesis, when shoots are exposed to red light, accumulating PFR and expand their leaves and become green. Etiolated, shoot increases in length, but no photomorphogenesis because plants grown in the dark. There are those adult sprouts. Why do you Competition. Plants grown closer together experience more far red light, shade. These plants grow taller. Then your last three highlights are in this order, top to bottom, 24 morning clock. 24 morning clock. And then we'll do the review questions in our review over this, okay? <laughs> 24 morning clock. All right. And, um, oh, and hope that was helpful. Okay.